video for you. Um, just so you know, my dishwasher is running, so that's what that sound is. Um, I'll try to talk loudly so that you guys can hear me. I'm back with another recipe for you. Today we're going to be making some Pest Away Spray or Bug Spray, the natural way. And I'm back with the oil and glass book. I highly recommend this book if you're new to oils because I have made so much stuff out of this book. Pinterest is good too, but it's nice to just have a book with recipes, with, and it's pretty. <laughs> they, I mean, they have um, different supplies you can get. They have diffuser favorites. I've used so much out of this book, but we're gonna be using the Pest Away Spray. I am gonna tweak it just like a, a, a hair. Um, so I am gonna be adding one more oil that's not listed on here, uh, which is Centronella. They don't list Centronella on here. This book really is um, good for people that just have basic oils. A lot of the oils in here from the starter kit, a lot of them are the, the more affordable oils to buy so that you can still make really good products with and not have to spend a ton of money. So first I'm gonna be talking about, and just real quick, about the harm, the, the reason bug spray, you should make your own, it, um, and why bug spray is bad. So um, bug spray, and I have my notebook again. I like to write everything down, so I have just one, one, two pages to talk about bug spray for you. Um, bug spray is classified as a pesticide. Pesticides, you don't think about them being like an actual thing that you put in your body. Like I used to think of pesticides as only like something that you would spray a field with, like farmers would use it, but it is classified as a pesticide. Um, in the main um, uh, chemicals that are in uh, pesticides, so bug, bug repellents are made up of two, in, two types of ingredients. There's active ingredients, which are the active repelling agents, and they must be listed on the label. And then there's inner ingredients, which is everything else they put into it, which includes solvents, preservatives, anti-caking slash anti-foaming agents, and fragrance and they do not have to be listed on the label. They don't have to list anything else that's in it. All they have to do is list the active ingredients. So you really don't know unless you research what is actually in your bug spray. Um, one of the leading chemicals that are in, which is an active ingredient, is DEET. Everyone's heard of DEET. DEET um, was actually developed by the US Army in 1946 to uh, protect soldiers in like high insected, high areas that full of insects. Um, it was released to the general public in the U.S. In, in 1957. It actually does not kill bugs. A lot of people think that it kills them. It doesn't actually kill them, but it messes with the receptors that they use to detect human chemicals, so then they, they can't find you. Um, so DEET, um, the way that it uh, messes with the receptors is it blocks an enzyme that bugs have um, called, and I'm going to butcher the name, chlorolinesterase, and this is essential for transmitting messages from the brain to the muscles, and that's what it interferes with. Um, so some um, problems with DEET is that it's linked to skin blisters, seizures, memory loss, headaches, stiffness of the joints, shortness of breath, and it can cause neurotoxicity. Um, once spraying it on, it takes six hours for 40% 48% of the applied dose to absorb into your blood. Um, and it can cross um, into the placenta. And so uh, I read one study that said that uh, a three month old, they were able to detect D in her bloodstream from her mom's usage of it. Um, there are two more types of chemicals that are used in bug spray. They're not as, they're just as common as DEET, but um, people like really know like, oh DEET, that's what they like think of when they think of bug spray. These are two different ones. They are just as common though. And I am going to butcher the names. The first one is Cyfluthrin and it is linked to neurotoxicity as well. And the way that it, it the way that it um, can affect your brain is it interferes with sodium and potassium ion channels. And then the result is that the nerves, oh, sorry, it interferes with the sodium and potassium ion channels in the nerves, resulting in loss of coordination, muscle tremors, and behavior change. Um, and it also reduces glucose and blood red cells, and it disrupts liver function. Um, 
I did not say this, sorry. I wanted to say it about D. There are, for each of these chemicals, there are environmental impacts. Um, and most of the time, obviously, when you're using bugs spray, you're gonna be outside. You're gonna be out probably somewhere where it's wooded. You're not just gonna be walking around in an urban area. It's gonna be in like a wooded area. It's gonna be in a plant-filled environment. Um, so DEET um, contaminates water and soil very badly. Um, and we think of like to think of water as it is a unlimited resource, and it really isn't. We have an abundance on it on Earth. Most of it is not drinkable, and most of it is underground, but that still is a, a, we only have a certain amount of it. It's all recycled. Once it's gone, it's gone. Once it's contaminated, we cannot use it. So the slur, cyflur, cyfluthrin is harmful to aquatic invertebrates, fish, and honeybees. And the bees are very near and dear to my heart because they are one of our biggest pollinators. Um, but most of the time you're going to be around fish and I mean, you use it when you're fishing, you're spraying this around on yourself, getting in water, stuff like that. Um, the last chemical is actually a, um, hard one to say, per, actually, sorry, there's two more, permethrin, um, it's a synthetic pesticide to treat bug resistant clothing and found in most bug sprays. This is also sprayed on crops um, regularly so like something that you're putting on your body is going onto a field um, and this is linked to neurotoxicity well most of almost all of these are linked to that um, high levels can affect the function of chloride channels in your brain causing seizures and it causes can cause death of neural cells so neurons in your brain can cause them to die and if a newborn is exposed to it it can impair, uh, there was a study where newborns were exposed to this chemical and it impaired working memory by interfering with neural processing in the frontal lobe. So it messed up with their memory. Uh, and then it is also toxic, toxic to fish, aquatic life, and bees. Another thing, bees, everything with the bees. Um, so we wonder why the bees are disappearing. It's probably because we're overusing bug sprays. Um, the last one is actually a class of chemicals which contain over 1,000 insecticides, and they're called pyrethyroids, I believe. These um, are lymph lymphophilic, which they means they love fat cells, and they can easily cross over the blood-brain barrier, thus becoming toxic to the central nervous system. So everything we talked about neurotoxicity, that's what it can do as well. And this, uh, so, and then it is also harmful to fish, aquatic life, and bees, which almost all of these are. Um, so with all that in mind, I don't know why you would still want to use bug spray, and I'm guilty of it. Like you're out camping, you don't, you don't have any other option. You mosquitoes are eating you alive. You need something. And just like two two weeks ago, I didn't have time to make this bug spray that I'm going to show you how to make, and I used regular bug spray, and I was kicking myself for using it, um, but I did. I feel really bad about it. So we're, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. We're going to Florida. I know there's gonna be lots of mosquitoes and bugs ready to eat us. And so I'm making bug spray so we can take it with us. Um, so you're only gonna need a few things for this. Um, a two ounce glass spray bottle. I got these off Amazon. Um, you want it to be either blue glass or amber glass because of the oils that you're gonna put in it. They need, if they're exposed to direct sunlight, it can, it can affect them. And you're going to need um, some witch hazel. You're going to need alcohol free, um, sorry, alcohol free and unscented. You don't want it to be scented with any fragrance and you want it to be alcohol free. I just got this at Kroger. And then I also scanned this in the Think Dirty app to make sure that that was clean. It was rated a three and it was, had the green check mark. So we're good that this is healthy. Um, you're going to need five different oils. Um, the first one you're going to need is purification, lavender, lemongrass, eucalyptus, redata, redata, I can't pronounce that correctly, eucalyptus, and then also citronella. Everyone knows the citronella, the candle. I don't particularly like the smell of citronella candles. And I never liked the smell of Centronella. And then the reason I did not like it is because it's artificial smell for Centronella. It's not, it's not the real Centronella smell. This 
it's all fake. This actually smells really good. Um, and then you're also going to use water. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna put 10 drops of each oil in here. So I'm just gonna get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love the smell of purification. It's one of my favorite oils. I like to put it on my dryer balls um, before putting it in the, the dryer. It makes my clothes smell so good. Lavender is just that when you think essential oil, you think of lavender. I've got, I like can't ever run out of this. I've got like backups upon backups of lavender. Lemongrass. And if you put an extra drop, like I did, it's not gonna hurt anything. This was a oil I got on promo for free. If you're part of Young Living Essential Rewards, you get, um, depends on how much money you spend, you can get um, promo oils. And this was one of the ones I got on promo. Also, I also got the Centronella on promo. I, I was gonna buy it this month and then June 1st they came out and said it was going to be a promo and I was like well don't even have to buy it okay there is all that all the oils are in it and then next you're just going to fill it up with equal parts um witch hazel and equal parts water and I you could measure with the freaking measuring thing. I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm just gonna fill it up half of the way with witch hazel. I've never smelled witch hazel before. It doesn't really have a smell. And then step over here to the sink, sorry. Fill it up with the other half of the way with some water. And then just invert it to get it all mixed up. And the reason you want the witch hazel is um, the oils will not dissolve in regular water. They just don't, obviously oil doesn't dissolve in water because of the difference in densities. So you need the witch hazel so that it will dissolve. And then it's all mixed up. It smells really good. So the reason that you use these oils, um, they all repel bugs, um, very natural, they're natural and they repel bugs. Then I also had a fact written down that the CDC actually recommends using centronella, le lemongrass and eucalyptus to, as, as bug spray. So this isn't just some honky tonky like thing that like I made up that people are making up to like sell essential oils or everything. The CDC actually recommends this as a, as a natural um, bug spray. So then I just got a label. Sorry, I saw something out the window and it, I was like, is somebody here? We're trying to sell our couch. Um, if anyone wants to buy a couch, you can come, you can come pick it up by tomorrow night, it's yours. Um, we're getting a new one so i just made a little label and i didn't i didn't make it say bug spray i made it say bug off which i thought was funny very comical and i'll just stick my label in there and now it's all ready for my vacation and it's healthy and it's i know that what i'm putting on my body and what sh my wife's putting on her body is good and healthy for us so if you guys have any questions about how to um, make this, I can take you a picture of the recipe for you. Um, any questions on the essential oils, please don't go try and make this with just essential oils that you find at the store. Please ask me um, about what is, I personally only use Young Living essential oils and that's what you should use as well. Um, so don't just go try to go to Walmart and buy essential oils because 
what you who knows what you're gonna be putting on your body so you guys have a great night and if you make this please let me know